Well, we are live here with another episode of the Emissary Authors Podcast with Career Factors author Sam Feeney. Today, we're going to live stream this, and this is all about how to unlock fulfilling work without leaving your job. A fascinating book that was written here by author Sam Feeney. Uh, welcome, Sam. Hey, Jason, glad to be here. Uh, excited to talk about this topic because I think too many people don't like their jobs and I want to offer them a way out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can totally understand that. Now, you are no stranger. We're just going to dig in here. You're no stranger to working with people on their careers. That's tell, Give us a backstory of how you came to this point of writing Career Factors. Yeah, I kind of stumbled into it. I was a teacher for a long time, uh, teaching high school English, and then had to get a master's degree because of where I was uh, living and the state regulations. So chose school counseling. And stumbled upon career development as one of my master's classes and just immediately fell in love with it and wrote a course for teachers called Finding Yourself in the World of Work. And then uh, really started digging in on students. I realized as a school counselor that the career development we were giving them, which was a diploma and a transcript that takes to college, was not sufficient. And in effect, I was part of the problem. And so I really took kind of took that onus upon myself to say, I've got to figure out how to, how to fix this and come about this differently. So started out trying to address a, a problem for students. And then, you know, uh, most of our lives are not as students. And so this, I uh, saw this problem carry for decades into, uh, into people's lives and, um, and even a little bit in my own. And so I was definitely solving a problem that I saw, uh, close. And then also was starting to feel a little bit in my own career. And that's where, uh, it does seem like a common theme, uh, beginning there down in high school where people are trying to figure out what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. And then, you know, those of us who have traveled a bit on this planet and have done some things, we still come to those points where the work that we're doing isn't that fulfilling. And then we start talking to people, hey, what do, should I change jobs? What should I do here? And you've identified a handful of what you call factors. Now, you, this is not only from your personal experience, but it's my understanding you, you've done some research on this and invited other, other input to, to develop these career factors. Yeah, absolutely. This wasn't just my own experiment in a very small test tube. This was uh, a fair amount of research done and gathered uh, from a, a number of decades around work. And, uh, so I was looking for the, the broad research and then c can I start to apply it? And, it, and almost without fail, the research is, is holding up. And so the way I've arranged it in particular uh, about with the career factors themselves is designed to make it very facile to, for the, the user to say, can you, can you not rehash all the research, but maybe just tell me what I'm supposed to do now. And that's really what career factors is, is designed to be, um, and, and even with the readability, you know, the, the intentional inclusion of a fictional character in order to help you get through <laughs> some of the stickier research parts, Marcus, Marcus helps us jump over some of those things in that. It is one of the fascinating things about your book that you do write it from the standpoint of a fictional character, because I think that sometimes these reads can be a bit heavy or academic in nature, simply you know, especially when we bring research into it and it makes the topic less approachable. And in particular, this idea of career, it's such a personal decision on one's part. And so many, I, I guess, you know, the word that comes to mind factors, and I don't mean to, you know, to say it simply because that's what you've named it, but it is so true that there are all these factors that come into play to, to bring us to a point where we can really participate perhaps in being assertive about creating jobs, careers that really, you know, wake us up in the morning. We want to get, we want to get to work. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that was really that big barrier, um, even for myself as an author, and this is something that I, I really appreciated in, in connecting with, uh, you guys about was I wanted people to feel in that heft of that book, the work that had gone into it. But then that was just for me. Then I realized, well, actually, I want people to read it. <laughs> I want people to, to be affected by it, to be able to grow from it and learn from it. And so the accessibility for it, like one thing that I've enjoyed is 
being able to give these out at a workshop or, you know, working with, I work with teachers a lot. Uh, and, you know, you see them when they, when they get it, you know, uh, there, there's not a hesitation of like, oh, this is going to be my shelf. They get, it's an immediate, like they flip it over. I'm like, oh, okay. That's good. All right. I can actually, I can get through this in a weekend and get some tools to figure out how my career can go differently than the, the path it's currently on. Yeah. And, and you, you not only have written this book, but you alluded to it right there with this idea of workshops. So when you're, when you're speaking to an audience, give us a, give us an understanding of who this audience is and why they care so much. Right. Well, I mean, I am, I'm investing in particular, um, this first groups of people that I've been focusing on and that have kind of even are players in this book, in the story of the book are, are educators because for so many of them, they are the front row seat that kids get to careers before they get out into the real world. And I recognize that the messages that we send, we call it in education, all the hidden curriculum. The message that we send students about careers is very, very important. But I don't think t- teachers or educators tend to their own careers enough to be engaged and, and to really kind of like show off a little bit like, hey, this is an awesome job or whatever, you know, and, it, and teaching is very difficult sometimes. Like it's not always sunshine and roses, but why I'm so keen to help uh, teachers in particular, educators uh, of all stripes is because when they get that opportunity to, uh, to be able to kind of turn on their own career, uh, again, the, pro- the whole premise is that um, I, I believe and I assert and, and do my darndest to back it up that you can improve your job satisfaction just by reading that book, not brushing up your resume, not changing jobs, not, you know, getting a new role. And so that's very, very important to me to be able to give that gift of someone because I know they're going to turn around and interface with 100, 150, 200 students. And that can change that kid's perspective on that. So this is my, how do I scale this fast is be able to help teachers really be excited about their jobs because every day is a, a bit of a, a testimony of what their job is or what works like for the kids that they're in front of. So it's a big deal for me. Yeah. Teachers that I think are a very leveraged group of people. They, what they do on a day-to-day basis changes the trajectory in many cases of a child's life. And I think that each one of us can look back on a particular teacher who stood out and the, the way they engaged with us, how they spoke to us, the, the things they taught us, those have a tendency to, to stick with us through time. I, I had a, a science teacher. I think it was eighth grade and he taught us kingdom phylum class order family genus species and he was an odd bird but he taught us these these things that we would just repeat 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 now as a you know middle 40s year old guy i still remember that or my first grade teacher uh mrs bertrand uh she was amazing she was she was just fantastic i have such good memories of her and and it wasn't because she was uh you know super kind all the time you know she told me that I colored outside the lines and I didn't do so well on coloring. And she was 100% right. But it's interesting that these memories stick with us. And that's why I like the idea that you're speaking to teachers and facilitating them thinking about their own careers. And then through that, perhaps maybe the word is enlightenment. They then begin to teach students better about what might contribute to career satisfaction for them. Right. And it's not even, it's funny. It's not even over. Like I talked about the hidden curriculum. It it is just the example that they can be of someone who's really engaged in their job. Someone like the purpose of education is not to create more educators. It's to create better people, whatever. Or, you know, for me, the, the bent of career is I'd love to give you a career toolbox and you build something totally different than what I've built. That's awesome. That's, that's totally fine with me. And, but the, the idea of, uh, the, the, the perfect picture I have for a, a teacher or anybody at their job when they are working when, and their career factors are being hit is that they end the day physically tired, 
but emotionally, spiritually filled up. Like they've, this is it, like whatever it is, it, and it could be any, you know, any job, the factors fit any job, but in particular for teachers and in a, uh, in a system that really tends to have people feeling more and more drained. This is, this is my response to that. This is my hope uh, of how we can change that. Well, this comes at an important time also, I think, because speaking of pivots, COVID presented, I think, a unique challenge for people when they started considering their careers, because the framework by which we understood career to be and operate in a you know, day to day basis changed so significantly. What did you see as the ch as these pivotal changes and how did that impact your writing of this book? What's interesting to this is, is I, as I said before, writing some of this for myself, I had kind of have, had lived it a fair amount in the years just before COVID and then through that. Um, and what I really saw was an acceleration of what I think was coming anyway, which I'll say for a lot of educators now we're about a year or so out of from kind of officially being out of the, or, uh, I think a lot of educators have still been waiting for things to go back to how they were. And I'll paint that picture just very briefly. I started teaching in 2000. And when, uh, when I started it, there was a, a run for about 10 years where, th where things were kind of status quo. There was an old guard retiring from the eighties and nineties, a bunch of new teachers into the, into the market, uh, across the whole country. And then a couple of things started changing about education that really, I think changed the relationship between between the, the teacher. And I really, I talk about that a little bit in the book and you, you have a relationship with your job, right? It might have a healthy relationship and not be, a, might not be the ideal relationship that you want, but you do have a relationship with your job. And that relationship changed in, uh, the aughts. I don't know what we're calling that anyway, it's from 2000, 2010. Uh, and so when it did, it's, it began, I think some underlying trends that really not just emerged during COVID, but were accelerated by COVID that we are going to be dealing with for the next 10 or so years at least. Um, and so I think that the job has changed and, and where unfortunately many school leaders are stuck is thinking that one, it's education, it's different than other industries, we're fine, or that two, it's going to go back to the way it was. And I just, I'm not seeing that. And, and the research isn't bearing that out either. Well, speaking of things the way they were, not only we have this change with COVID, but we also have generational changes that are upon us going from, I think, a mindset, and you can unpack this better for us. My perspective is we gone from a mindset of, uh, you know, this is my job. I stick with this job forever, you know, and, you know, like Miss Bertrand, I think she was teaching for 30 years, 40 years. Um, and there, she wouldn't probably dream of doing anything different and probably didn't want to. And now we have this younger generation who the pressure is upon them from a very young age, figure out what you're going to do and also do it with all of these factors, you know, in mind. Um, but, you know, don't be afraid to change as well. It, tell, talk to me about maybe the difference between folks who, who uh, settled into their lives and their careers not in a bad way, but they settled in mm -hmm. versus the, the trend I think nowadays, which is go for the better, you know, go for the better, uh, uh grass when you find it. Right. And, and this in, in education right now, in terms of trends that we see, uh, as far as the research, the research shows is these two things are happening because of each other. Mm. And so what's happening right now, there's, there's a, which is allowing for a salary arms race in a lot of cases, because people are saying, Hey, there's a scarce resource here, you know, supply and demand. We need to be able to meet that and attract those, which is creating more and more job hopping. And in, in education, usually after about your fourth or fifth year, you're kind of, okay, I found my spot or, you know, outside of a spouse moving um, or for a job, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to be here. And that was really a generational mindset. And that's the same mindset remember that was producing the go to college, get a good job, used to be with a pension, yeah. and then you'll be fine, right? Like, because that was who we were as teachers, but that has changed dramatically. 
And so much of those things, I talk about this a fair amount in the book is so much of those things were external and you're re- you're meeting a generation who is really being internally motivated and education needs to be able to respond with something that says, okay, it's no longer going to be, you know, what, what we can pay the perks, right? The, you know, June, July, August, uh, we can't give you that as that's not drawing you anymore because everybody offers that. What can we do that's going to be different that meets that internal so that you can, you can self-regulate your career satisfaction, your career engagement and all of that. So the trend that we're seeing now are really allowing, they're, they're shifting the dynamic even a little bit of teachers kind of being in the driver's seat uh, of their careers, which I don't, I, they were in the past, like you could always just leave, right? But it was, you didn't feel that way, at least in education. Um, and now you say, okay, well, I can go anywhere. And the, the, the caution that I have for anyone who's moving to another job, this includes teachers now, is if you don't know why you're moving, you might find out that the grass isn't greener and that you're, you're making that move there. So both schools need to be responsive to this, but also teachers need to be responsive to this because if you grew up as, in a family of educators, which is me, you weren't taught how to think about school in this way, think about education in this way. It's just a, a, a totally different ball game uh, that is leaving a lot of people trying to figure out what's, what's their next move, either as a district, an individual school, or as an individual employee. I like that you bring up this idea of external factors and this, this idea that, you know, we, we just, you know, kind of, uh, plant our feet and no, never move from that, that space. And we're there forever to the internal factors of what do I want? What do I need? What satisfies me? Where am I headed? All of these discussions now, which, which I think are, are, which go on part, partly, I think in your book and the career factors, it seems to me that there is a profound need for administrators who might be largely in that uh, sort of fixed mindset or external mindset uh, to understand the motivators that other people are thinking about. And if they don't think about those, somebody else is. And uh, and maybe the answer isn't, well, you know, people just need to, to dig in and do the jobs because that's not enough anymore. Yeah, and that's where I, I think the... And really career factors was born out of a, an analysis of the, what I'll call in, in industry, I'll call the middle manager, which is really a lot, most building principles, uh, maybe an assistant principal is they're kind of stuck in the middle of, I have this mandate, you know, my role to do whatever. And then I have all these different teachers. I was a great instructional educator. I'm now learning how to be an instructional leader, right? That's what their master's degree is in, but not a leader of people. And I don't, I, I don't have a toolbox for this. It's, it's, I think leaving, like we, we use the tools that we have available to us. And so if, if generationally the tools have been compensation, um, you know, some carrots and sticks around, you know, performance, um, and maybe a sense of camaraderie, which is very important. If that's all I have and that's not working anymore, most people are stuck thinking, well, I'm just going to do more of that instead of, I, I like, I don't know what my other options are. Right. I just, I have that open. So what I, that is, that is part of that design of the career factors is to hand somebody a toolbox to engage with their team members and with their employees in a different way. And that's actually, we're going to talk more about that our second session, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm actually going to bring on a, uh, an administrative coach who I think can shed a lot more light on this than, than we can in the time remaining. Uh, but it's, it, it does force you to think differently. And that's really the goal of any of my books is to, uh, not always necessarily a how to, um, if we don't first change how to think. Yeah. So let's, let's dig in here for administrators who, who are viewing this or listening to this, what is the best way to use this book, the career factors in their organizations? By first and foremost, applying it to yourself, uh, to be able to be your own guinea pig and say, okay, 
Like and, and this is this is problem number one with most professional development or things that are rolled out before teachers is I heard this is good. Let's do it. Not I did this. Let's do it. And so that's what I would just recommend off the bat is just do it and just as a gift to yourself, frankly, because I, um, I'm not saying that, that this book is a gift. I'm for them saying that being engaged in your job is, and that is really, really important for, uh, for school leaders to be able to share that with their teams is something that, that they've tested themselves. And it has that credibility handoff, which is really, really important. So we would call it, uh, in, in the marketing lingo, eating your own dog food. Um, you know, but I, I've, I've never, uh, I've never known what my dog's dog food tastes like, which would make it very terrible for me to figure out how to make a better one. So your advice to administrators, pick up the book, apply it themselves and be a model. It, it seems like fantastic advice and, and, you know, it sounds remedial, but I think pe people don't really think of it sometimes in that way that, you know, I invest in myself and this is what a $15, $20 investment. I invest in the trajectory of my own life. And if I'm not going to invest in that, you know, who am I to, to speak out investing in others? And then that model becomes a change, uh, or people can sense a change in, in us, which then as we're talking about these leveraged folks of, you know, being teachers becomes something that students can follow. Um, now for, for an administrator who wants to bring this program into their school district or work with their people, what's that process like? And why is that important? Yeah. And just one comment on what you said, we're already modeling something. Why don't if, what if we were models being engaged and excited about your career? Right. So anyway, uh, it can't hurt. Could it <laughs> easy, easy steps to learn more? Uh, would be heading to Echo Education, uh, e -c -c -o -education com, and just learn more about how we approach teacher engagement and retention so that you can figure out if this is something that makes sense for you. So we'll do professional development for, uh, for like workshop for admin teams. We'll do, uh, you know, school wide, district wide. Uh, work for engagement and we build it. We have a, a pretty cool model that we've developed to be able to help you in, in the three phases to be able to own your teacher career engagement, uh, for the rest of time, the way we build it in, we, we, we've got a process that's pretty fun that allows you to own the results that you're getting, uh, which I think a lot of teachers don't always feel like they own the, the results of their efforts. So yeah, Echo Education will do that with, we've got an awesome team of consultants who are helping come in and, and coach and, uh, and be able to give that gift to a teacher of really loving their job uh, so that they can give the, that example to kids. Now in your book, as we're winding down here, you've also got a, a self-assessment. Give us just a quick overview of what a person's going to discover in that self-assessment. Yeah, you're going to discover your main drivers, um, the things that really light you up about your career at the present. And one thing that I, why I uh, recommend teachers take this, administrators, is you may have gotten into education for a particular reason, for a particular factor. But at this stage in your career, you might need to look in the mirror again and take, by taking this assessment, you'll figure out, oh, you know what? I got into this for impact. But right now I'm kind of in a growth mode. Okay. Well, now I've got that set of lenses. Now I can see things differently as I go throughout my day. So the assessment is, uh, it's quick. It's, uh, I call it a four minute assessment. It shouldn't take you very long ability to then get some results and say, okay, now what do I do with this? How do I apply that next is really powerful for you to start owning your own career engagement. Excellent. Well. People can go to thecareerfactors.com if they want to learn more about you or Echo Education. The links are in the chat and they'll be in the stream as well. And we do have a special for folks who are joining us for this live stream. $14.99 at the QR code that's sitting right above my head. It'll also be on right after this broadcast. This is the new edition of Sam Feeney's Career Factors that is just releasing today. And you do want to go uh, pick that up. Like we talked about before, an investment in yourself will always pay off. 
you're entirely in control of it. And I love what you talk about, Sam, that, that, uh, you're not just, you don't read it just so you can educate other people, but what if you could wake up happier in the morning, have fulfilling work and go home with a smile on your face. And, uh, especially as we're talking about as e even navigating new careers, setting a new pace, why, why leave a job when you don't know why you're leaving? What, what could you do if you just dug in today? Uh, any last words you want to leave us with? And I know that uh, I do want to plug before we go also a, new, a leather live stream. Keep a lookout for those links that are coming up. We're going to do a three part series on the Sam Feeney's career factors as we unpack the career factors, how you can apply them and how you can make a difference for yourself. But go ahead, Sam, leave us with some final words. Yeah, I would just encourage you, like kind of, as you said, Jason, that it's worth it. Um, it's something that if you for a long time have just kind of let your view of your career and maybe how you function within your career and just let it settle and kind of say, Hey, you know what? It's work. You know, that's just what it is. Uh, I would just would encourage you to, to give this a spin and try to apply it for your own self because the, the gift of a, a rejuvenation in your career affects your family. It affects your finances. It affects your energy levels. I mean, it's just crazy how much uh, it can make a huge difference in your life. So definitely encourage you to check it out just for uh, your own self. Um, you know, most school leaders are pouring into other people and they're not nearly enough into themselves. And you guys deserve stuff like this. Good words. Well, thanks for joining us today, Sam. Uh, to all of our viewers and listeners, this is a presentation from Emissary Publishing with our author, Sam Feeney, talking about Sam Feeney's career factors, unlock fulfilling work without leaving your job. Keep a lookout for those future live streams, which we, where we'll dig into the book, talk about some of those career factors and why they're important to you. And also click on the QR code or uh, scan the QR codes. There we go. Scan the QR codes or click on the links. If you want to pick up a copy right now, it's $14.99 is our launch special. You can also pick it up on Amazon in the future and you can go to the careerfactors.com or Echo Education uh, if you're an administrator and you're interested in taking this to your team. Thanks, Sam.